Hello everyone. Well, I guess it's been a long time coming, but uh, it seems like it's uh, a good time to do the third and final game in the Hugo's House of Horrors trilogy, because Halloween is coming up, and uh, people have been asking me uh, for a while, when are you going to do the last Hugo game? Now, the, even though they're called Hugo's House of Horrors, the Hugo games have never really been really serious horror games. The first game was a comic horror kind of game, like it took place in a haunted house kind of setting, but it was like a, a comedy horror kind of thing. The <clears throat> excuse me, the, the second game was not a horror game at all. It's it's a, it's a murder mystery, but there's nothing scary about it. It's actually, in my opinion, the second game is by far, like far and away the the best game in the series. It's it's by far the the only game that really um feels like a kind of like a full game the other two games are very short they're so short you can play them through in one sitting and probably will um so yeah this game is pretty short um i might do it in one video but i'm going to try to drag it out because this is the last hugo game this is you know the last of the great shareware sierra style adventure games there are no more after this so um or there may be other, you know, other games in other series, but I mean, this is the last game of this series. So I'm going to try to drag it out just a little bit. I'm, I'm not in a hurry to get this, this game done, so I'll probably do this in at least two videos, if not three. I mean, the game is, is really short. Like, you could easily do the game in one video, but I'm going to try to drag it out to at least two videos, uh, which theoretically I'm good at because I tend to talk a lot in these videos, as people know. So let's go ahead and enter the Hugo 3 directory, and uh, let's see what awaits us here. So, um... There is a file, id.diz file. Let's check out what, what that says. This is version 2.1. It's a VGA graphics adventure game, the final episode in the hugely popular trilogy of colorful animated VGA adventure games. I don't know if that hugely popular is quite accurate, but uh, I guess the rest is fairly true. It features spectacular full-screen graphics, a new turbo button, and built-in hints. Will Hugo outwit the evil witch doctor, find the mysterious pool of life, and finally beat his arch enemy, arch enemy the old man? You bet, and much more besides. Yeah, this is, um, it's kind of a silly game, but it's it's fun. Uh, and there is a manual. Let's, let's check out that, uh, let's see, let's actually take a look at that uh, manual.doc. So yeah, the game comes with a manual as such. I mean, it's a you don't probably don't need a manual for this game, but it comes with one just because David P. Gray was still doing his Gray Design Associates thing back then in 1992, which is gosh, that's 31 years ago. Wow, unbelievable. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this is the table of contents. I'm not going to dwell on most of this very long, but I mean. There is a specification, in case you want a specification before you play your game. Well, here's one for you. Um, other features include save and restore and inventory keeping and the all-important boss key. Boy, inventory keeping, that's something you don't often see in adventure games, isn't it? That's a great, great feature. Good that they listed that. Some requirements, pretty... <laughs> a hard disk is not essential, but highly recommended. Boy... Boy, back in the days when people could still play games with floppy disks. Not not just games, like, not just that games came on floppy disks, but that you could actually play the whole game on a floppy disk without having a hard drive. That was, uh, boy, that was a different time, wasn't it? Revision history, okay, so a couple of bugs were fixed, and then they changed the documentation. Program self-check as a measure of protection against accidental corruption, or perhaps intentional corruption, is theoretically possible. So it's nice that they have a whole, I like they have a whole section on the starting program. Start Hugo 3 Jungle of Doom by typing Hugo. Boy, this is a pretty, pretty extensive documentation here. So this is how to play. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's a Hugo game. I mean, we know how to play these games. Function keys, F1, F2. F1, F2, and F3 function exactly like Sierra Adventures. Um, help, turn, toggle sound, and then repeat last command. But F4 is where the differences start. Uh, in Sierra games, save if game is usually F5, but here it's F4, and then restore is, is F5 here. Usually it's F7 in Sierra games. Inventory is F6. Okay, fair enough. I think in, I mean, I think, I know in Sierra Adventures it's usually tab. And then this is what's new. The turbo button is F8. So yeah, the turbo button will speed things up. Note that everything will happen faster, not just Hugo's. Use it with care. A T will appear to indicate that the turbo was in effect. Oh yeah, and F9 is the boss button. Um, all right. Help hints. Oh boy, this is, uh, I mean, okay, this is for people who have never played an adventure game before in their lives, I guess. Although if, if you've never played an adventure, you should, probably, you should probably play the first two games in the series before playing this one. You probably shouldn't play this one first. 
because this is the end of the series, not the start of the series. Uh, anyway, good luck and have fun. The Hugo Trilogy, and here they did describe the other games in the series in case you haven't seen them or played them. So Hugo, Hugo 1, Hugo Sosa 4 is, is a, yeah, it's a fun little game. Hugo 2 have done it is, like I said, it's actually, Hugo 2 is actually quite good. Like I actually, I know some people say it's very bad. Um, I mean, it's not, it's, it's kind of amateurish, but it actually, it's, it actually is pretty good. I actually endorse Hugo 2 as a pretty good game. I mean, I played it. I made a Let's Play of it a few years ago. You can watch the Let's Play if you want to see it. And then, yeah, this game. And then ordering information. Order form. <laughs> Distributed by World Wide Web. That's nice. Mail to David P. Gray when he was operating from Northboro, Massachusetts. I don't know if he still is. Maybe he still is. Who knows? Methods of payment. Here's information for U.S. customers, Canadian customers, Australian customers, U.K. customers, and other foreign customers. Here's a distribution license. Pretty long distribution license. Disclaimer of warranty. Usual liability disclaimer so that people don't sue them if the game crashes their computer. So I say we're a shareware professional is miscellaneous. Let's express special thanks to Gary Serrois for his help in creating the graphic hero two for Hugo three. He's a professional computer artist. Anyone who likes his current address can contact AP Gray. At, okay. Contact AP Gray to get Gary Serrois' current address. Yeah, the, the way that the, the, dra the graphics were done in these games is kind of interesting. People pointed out in Hugo 2, um, most of the graphics in Hugo 2 are very, you know, amateurish and very simplistic, uh, as were the graphics in Hugo 1. But a few of the screens in that game looked like, and probably were, they really looked like digitized photographs. Like, some, like somebody actually took a photograph and then just digitized the photograph for the for the game. So it, it's, it creates kind of a kind of a jarring effect when you know when you're in one room where the whole game the, 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 where the whole room is just like very simple polygons and then suddenly you walk into another room and it, it looks like a scanned photograph it's just kind of a little bit uh um what's the, what's the word i'm looking for not incongruous but uh i guess inconsistent i was, I was trying to think of another word not inconsistent but um i don't know i forget i'm 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 getting old and losing my memory and forgetting all kinds of words and things. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and run the game. Hugo. Oh yeah, and when you start this game, there's the most wonderful jingle. There's the most wonderful DOS music jingle that I've ever heard, probably ever. This is the the best game start music of all time. Get a load of this. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's so, that's so wonderful. I I still will will sing that. Like just when I'm when I'm doing random things throughout my day, when I'm just you know doing things like I don't know going to the store to buy groceries or doing my laundry or or you know whatever other normal things that people do in their lives, I will just like start singing that theme to myself, and it's it, and it kind of annoys other people and. You know, it's it's kind of, yeah, but anyway. Anyway, so Hugo and Penelope are returning home from their vacation at the, at the cottage of Great Uncle Horace. I'm guessing that Great Uncle Horace lives in the UK because we see that uh, sort of white dotted line that's emerging there. It looks like they're flying from, uh, well, somewhere in Europe. I'm going to guess England because I think David P. Gray was an Englishman who lived, uh, who later moved to, uh, who later immigrated to the USA. So I guess Hugo and Pen Penelope are doing the same. They're flying from the UK to the US. Suddenly, a freak magnetic storm causes the compass and their lightly aircraft to spin wildly. Unable to navigate, Hugo loses all sense of direction. Oh no. Finally, hopelessly lost over a South American jungle, the plane about to run out of gas, Hugo spots a clearing just big enough to land it. With fingers clenching the controls, he shouts, Hold on, Penelope, we're going down! Well, we made it, says Penelope with relief as she and Hugo survey the crash site. I think I'll go off and explore a little, she continues. Always a good thing to do when you're in a in a, a jungle in a in an unfamiliar territory. Just just go off and explore by yourself. What could go wrong? Well, don't wander too far, warns Hugo. I'll inspect the airplane while you're gone. Okay, honey, calls Penelope as she heads into the jungle. And for goodness sake, change your clothes. They clash terribly with the scenery. Hmm. 
Nothing much exciting happening here. Lots of trees and things. Some pretty flowers. Cute spider's web. Hmm. Wonder who goes doing fixing the plane. Chomp. Er. Help! Help! Hugo hears the faint cries for help and rushes to the rescue. He's already had time to change his clothes, obviously. A young native girl who happened to be passing by rushes on to the scene. I saw the whole thing! Your friend has been bitten by a dreaded, a dreaded tree spider! I'm afraid there's only one antidote and it must be administered within 48 hours! Do you have this antidote? Hugo asks. No! The only thing that can save your friend is water from the, a place we call the Pool of Life. It lies in a secret garden beyond the, behind the waterfall along yonder path. I'll attend to your friend while you, go f while you fetch the special water. Now go! Hurry! And that starts the game. The Dave girl points to the path behind her. Well, looks like it's up to you, old buddy. Better get going and find the antidote. But before we go and find the antidote, we need to head back to the plane, because there's stuff in the plane that we need to get. So yeah, Hugo changed his clothes, and... Uh, He's looking very fashionable in his, uh, gosh, I mean, I think I've joked before, I think when, when I, well, it's not really a joke, I think I've commented before in, in the previous games that Hugo looks just a little bit, um, he's just a bit on in years, isn't he? I mean, he's, I mean, sure, he's, he's a very nice gentleman, but he's just, he looks like he's just a, his age is just a bit incongruous with, uh, I think that's the word he's looking for, incongruous. Wait, was it? I don't know. Anyway, no, I think I said I, thought, I said it was not incongruous. I was thinking of something else. Okay. Anyway, um, his, his age is just a bit incongruous with Penelope's age. I mean, Penelope just appears, you know, a little bit younger than him. And when I say a little bit, I mean like about thirty years younger than than Hugo. Unless, I mean, I guess I guess it's possible that she just artificially dyes her hair. And I mean, it's hard to tell. It's, I mean, with these graphics, let's it's let's face it, it's hard to tell. I mean, she could be. She could be in her 50s, she could be in her 20s, who knows. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's the game. Um, and before I forget, let's try out that turbo button. So if I press F8, hold on, let me let me get Hugo walking across the screen now. And I'm going to press F8. And this is, this is Hugo in turbo mode, and this is Hugo in regular mode. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really make a huge difference, does it? The contrast in speeds is maybe a little bit disappointing. Um... So I'm wondering why the plane has a tail number of GLS because... Oh, that's probably... Oh, oh, oh. Gary Sirois, that's the artist. Because I was going to say, because plane uh, tail numbers, the letter at the start of the, the, the plane number usually indicates the country that the plane is registered in. And in the U.S., assuming Hugo lives in the U.S., it would be N, because N is the um, registration letter indicating planes registered in the U.S.A., so much so that plane numbers are called N, or tail numbers are called N numbers in the U.S. often. Uh, but I guess that's 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 Gary Stilwa's initials because he was the artist for the game. So, all right. And I, I don't know what 920 is. Is that the date? Maybe that's maybe that's the year. Maybe that's the year he made this art. This this art dates back to the year nine nine hundred and twenty. Uh, more than a thousand games. More than a thousand games, more than a thousand years before the game was actually released. Anyway, uh, so we're here, and we need to take a look around. We're in a clearance around by the internal jungle. We're going to a small path to the left, but the plane is here. Let's take a look at the plane. Doesn't look too badly damaged. All right. All right. Can we enter the plane? Okay. Okay. We didn't really. I don't think we really entered the plane. This looks more like we just walked a bit closer to the plane, which is not quite the same thing. Walking closer to the plane is not the same thing as going inside the plane. But let's take a look at what we have here. So the cars of the plane jumbled during the course landing, or you can make up the cockpit seats and instruments, which still appear to be okay. You'll see some clay, okay. Oh, some pins, okay. You can see a water flask, all right. Bouillon cubes and a sandwich, all right. Hmm. So if we get clay, okay, and we get some pins. I wonder what we would do with those. What would you do with clay and pins in a jungle setting? Hmm. That puzzle is uh, not uh, not too obvious now, is it? All right. Let's get the flask. Get the uh, cubes, the bouillon cubes, and the sandwich. All right. Can I fly the plane? <laughs> There's no point. Why would you fly a plane? There's no point to doing that. All right. Let's see. Can I... 
Uh, no, it's quitting the game. I don't want to quit the game. I just want to leave the plane. I don't fully understand you. Exit plane? Okay. Anyway. I'm of the opinion that leave plane should have worked, but classic case of guess the verb. Okay, I think we're done here. And there's not really much we can do here other than... Well, I mean, yeah, I can look at Penelope and... Why? It's Penelope. Talk to Penelope. Poor Penelope's not in a very talkative mood at the moment. Can we look at the native girl? Is there anything ordinary about her? Can we talk to the girl? The native girl is you all she can. And where is the answer you're supposed to be fetching? All right. All right. All right. I guess that's that. You're in jungle path, path which gently slopes up to the left. All right. That's true. I mean... I kind of saw that without the game telling me that, but it's nice that the game told us anyway. All right, there's a bridge here. Watch out! This bridge doesn't look like it would support your weight. The ropes are starting to fray at the ends. Hmm. Looks like this is a good time to save the game. Let's go ahead and save the game as bridge. Oh. Oh, the game won't let me try to walk across this bridge. If I try to walk across, it just stops me with this error. All right, well, how can we get... Through this, looking down the chasm, we can see a fast-running stream far below. There appears to be the path crossing the stream, but there is there is no way to get down the sides of the chasm from here. The bridge looks a bit dubious. All right, cross the bridge. There's no point. Why would you cross the bridge? There's no point to doing that. Just stay here for the rest of the game. Um, fix bridge. There's no point to doing that either. Break bridge. Should be more constructive. Uh. Build bridge. Construct bridge. You told me to construct a, You told me to be more constructive, and then when I try to construct a bridge, you say there's no point. All right. Uh, walk on bridge. I don't fully understand. How can you walk on a bridge? All right. Uh, let's see. Can we look at the trees? Okay, I'm going to save you some time here. There are about three zillion assorted vines, plants, flowers, trees, fronds, and other vegetation scattered li liberally around this jungle. Even just looking at all of them, we'll be here forever. Okay, that's fair. That's actually a, a fair response. I mean, contrasted with something like uh, like Merlin's tirade in uh, at the beginning of Conquest of Camelot, where he lists like 500 different types of herbs for absolutely no reason, like for no, no purpose that has anything to do with the game, just this kind of... I, I don't even know why. Just this gratuitous information. Um, oh, you seem to be having a little difficulty solving this puzzle. Would you like the answer? All right, can I type yes? You need to tie the vines to the bridge to help support it. Okay, that's nice. Um, hmm. Did I... Is there no penalty for... That's interesting. That's interesting. You know, I'm going to load the game just because... Uh... Okay, the bridge looks like it would support you now. Cool, thanks. I'm used to games having some kind of punishment for relying on hints. Usually you lose points or something like that, but uh, maybe this game you don't. Maybe this game just lets you coast on hints all the way. Crumph! As you leave the chasm, you hear the sound of the bridge collapsing behind you. Oh dear, it looks like you'll, need to... you'll have to find another way back to Penelope. All right. All right, well... No way back there. You're at the top of the cliff. They were two best heading down and a path heading up toward the bridge, which is useless now because the bridge has collapsed. You can also see an old scroll. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the old scroll. I'm assuming that's that thing on the ground right there. Let's get the scroll because we're on a roll. Okay. Can I read the scroll? Is that wishful thinking? No, we can read it. It's even in English. Lost near the mighty boulder, my precious crystal ball. I guess I couldn't hold her, so I must have let her fall. If anyone should find it, please return it to my keep. Be careful if you use it, for its powers runneth deep. Signed, the old man. All right. So basically, near the mighty boulder, he lost his crystal ball, and he wants it back. Okay. Fair enough. I can, uh, can understand that. I can understand wanting your ball back if you lose your, uh, if you lose your ball. Yeah. This bridge really, uh, alas, the bridge is collapsing some way across the chasm. Yeah, that really, uh, yeah, okay, the game won't let us, the game won't let us commit Sudoku and walk off the edge of the chasm there, which is probably just as well. All right, um, let's go ahead and, um, the star would probably take this path, I guess. Is there anything here? 
the base of the cliff path is the golden bell. Okay. I guess that's this thing here. The bell is small and golden. It makes a pleasant tinkling ring, which you find rather comforting for some reason. All right. Let's get that bell. Get that bell. Oh, hey. You can see a fast running stream fed by a waterfall to the right. The water is too fierce to cross anywhere. On the other side of the waterfall, you can see a little path heading into the undergrowth. Hmm. Okay, is there a little path here? Walk over river. Walk into river. Cross river. You can't cross. River is flowing too swiftly. You'll be carried away to your doom. Oh, boy. All right. Can I walk up here? You can't cross. The water is flowing too swiftly. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, hey. Look at that. It's a ghost. You're at the mouth of the cave. The cave is very gloomy inside. However, you can make it some steep stone steps heading upward. An evil spirit appears to be guarding the entrance. Oh, it's, it's, it's an evil spirit. Oh, no. The ghost doesn't appear to be very friendly and will not let you pass. Can I talk to the ghost? You get no reply. Kill ghost. Ghosts are impervious to physical, physical attack. You must think of another way. Seduce the ghost. I don't fully understand. Yeah, it seems a little bit beyond Hugo's capabilities, doesn't it? All right. Um, I'm going to guess we come back here later. Can I just... Hold on. Can I just, like, walk through the ghost? You got to enter the cave while the evil spirit is guarding it. Okay. I guess that answers that question. Okay. Reach a path which turns back on itself. Okay. It's a pretty big, uh, pretty big rock there. The rock itself looks like any other mighty boulder you might find in these parts. Hmm. 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 Is this that mighty boulder? You know, sometimes sometimes I ask myself why anyone would really bother to try that. Well, I guess you would. Oh, well, you climb up on the, onto the rock, prance around for a while, then climb back down. Are you satisfied now? All right, I guess, uh, I guess this isn't that uh, search rock. Yeah, okay. Move rock? There's no point, yeah, all right. Look behind rock. My, my, we are thorough, aren't we? Well, just for you. There's a crystal ball lying behind the rock, linting in the sun. You fetch it out. All right. Well, that took care of that. I guess we found where the crystal ball is. Uh... The crystal ball appears cloudy. Hmm. All right. No fortune for us today. Um, I'm going to go there a little bit later. We're at the outskirts of a native village. Seems like uh, it might be dangerous. So let's uh, see what else we can find before we go up there. Oh, hey. You're in a jungle path. There is an elephant here who appears to be resting. It appears quite content and takes no, to no notice of you. Author's note. Yes, I know there are no elephants in the Amazon. This one just escaped from a zoo. Well, it's good that he mentioned that because otherwise 15 trillion people would have sent David P. Gray emails and letters saying uh, there are no elephants in the Amazon. But uh, this took care of that problem very handily. What do we have here? You've reached the banks of a fast-running stream. If there used to be a bridge here, it has long since disappeared. Looking into the water, you notice many small red fish, which you recognize instantly as flesh-eating piranhas. Oh, boy. This could get bad. Let's go ahead and save here. Uh, let's swim. I can't walk into the water. The game won't let me. Can I say swim? Swim would definitely not be advisable in this water. Hmm. Drink water? Flask appears to be empty. Fill flask. You fill the flask of ordinary water. Big deal. All right, can I drink water now? Hmm, that really is the spot. Now, what about poor Penelope? Did I empty the flask? Ah, oh, it appears to be empty. All right. Okay, um, well, once again, we have vines uh, just kind of hanging over the river, and the game seems to think they appear pretty sturdy. So can we uh, swing on the vines? Okay. Oh, it's another cute little, cute little masterpiece of DOS game music. But uh, I like the opening theme better. But that's pretty good as well. All right, what's over here? We're in a path which leads to river crossing on the right and the cliff top on the left. All right. Ah, and this takes us back here. Okay, this is where we were. 
Um, that's pretty much it. We've already seen pretty much the whole game. That's pretty much, that's most of the screens in the entire game other than that native village. So we'll go back and explore the native village and uh, that'll be pretty much the whole game. Uh, I'll end on, uh, I guess we need to go back. Or we could go with the long way around. We could go back the, around the, the bottom with the, where we... No, let's, let's, let's do this. Now, I don't know how you're supposed to know this. Because um, there's no... There's really no indication of this at all. So, I don't know if there's... Maybe if we sit around waiting long enough that that automated hint system will pop up and tell us. But I'll just go ahead and mention there is a hidden object in this room. And it's relatively easy to find if you know where it is, but how do you know that it's there? There we go. Searching behind the plants near the water, you find an old worn book. You fetch it out. So I am not aware of any way to really find out that this book is here. Um, in my opinion, this is a pretty... Um, It's a pretty bad puzzle. Like, I don't I don't really get the point. Why would you do this in a game? Why would you provide no indication that you're supposed to walk into that corner there and, and you know, just, just like, get a book from... I don't I don't know. Actually, I remember I remember uh, playing this game with her crabbiness, and, you know, actually, when we got to this puzzle, I remember she said, wow, that's a bad puzzle, and I, I have to agree with her. I think uh, that's... I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the Hugo games. I, I love these Hugo games. I'm very grateful to David P. Gray for making them uh, because they are great games. But this is just this. This is one of the most. I mean, I guess I can't say it's one of the most ridiculous puzzles I've ever seen in an adventure game because I mean, let's face it, we've all played adventure games and we we know. <laughs> we, I mean, we know some pretty ridiculous puzzles. I mean, what about the the cat hair mustache puzzle from Gabriel Knight Three? I mean. Stuff like that, or that stupid goat puzzle from uh, Broken Sword. Stuff. I mean, adventure games have their share of ridiculous puzzles, so it's not like this is the worst puzzle I've ever seen, but it's it's still pretty bad. Anyway, let's get the book. Let's get the book. Okay, can I read the book? It appears to be a very old book of spells. Unfortunately, the writing's in language unknown to you. However, on one page are some drawings of a bell and a candlestick. You can only guess as to the meaning of all this. Hmm, a bell and a candlestick, you say? Well, um... We got the bell, we, or we have a bell already. I don't have a candlestick yet, but uh, maybe Hugo will be nimble and Hugo will be quick and Hugo will save his game because it's time to end the video. So yeah, that was my first video. I mean, I mean look at our score. We're already like halfway through the game. <laughs> I've hardly done anything. We're already halfway through the game. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's not a long game at all. It's, it's a very short game. Um, I could very easily finish this game in the next video. Uh, maybe I will. If not, then, okay, it'll be... Maybe we'll make it to three videos, but uh, probably not. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway. Anyway, this has been the first video in my series, if you want to call it that, of Hugo 3 Jungle of Doom. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed. It's, it's a nice game. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love this game. I have fond memories of this game. I, I like most things about this game. It could stand to be a little bit longer, um, and this book puzzle could stand to be way better. There could have been, been some kind of hint about it. But other than that, it's a good game. I like this game, and I hope that I'll see you next time for more adventuring fun with Hugo. So until then, thanks again for watching, everyone. Take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye for now.